Hello everyone. Uh, so, in today's session of overview and integration of cellular metabolism, we will discuss TCA cycle, the biochemistry of TCA cycle. The concept here will be covered are conversion of pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A and the different biochemical steps of TCA cycle. Now, uh, before discussing TCA cycle, I would like to highlight that in the previous session, we have seen that uh, glucose is the major source of fuel and that can undergo aerobic glycolysis as well as anaerobic glycolysis. In mammalian cell which is basic, uh, which is uh, where the cells are basically aerobic mostly there this pyruvate actually enters TCA cycle by forming acetyl coenzyme A and then at the end of TCA cycle there is formation of few reducing equivalent which is utilized to form energy in the form of ATP in oxidative phosphorylation. Now, uh, this is the basic concept of cellular respiration which occurs in three different phases. In cellular respiration, there are different metabolic fuels mainly carbohydrate, lipid and proteins. Now, carbohydrate, lipid in the forms of fatty acid and few amino acids as well, they are entering in TCA cycle in the form of acetyl coenzyme A. Then that acetyl coenzyme A is forming different intermediate in TCA cycle tricarboxylic acid cycle forming different reducing equivalent and at the end stage these reducing equivalent they undergo oxidative phosphorylation which forms ATP and regener regenerate those oxidized form of the equivalence. So, this is the concept of cellular respiration. Now, Acetyl coenzyme A is the form by which actually pyruvate which comes from glucose or acetyl coenzyme A formed from different fatty acid or some of the amino acid they enter TCA cycle. So, formation of acetyl coenzyme A is required. Now, uh, pyruvate the pyruvate we get from uh, glycolysis it forms acetyl coenzyme A with the help of the enzyme now formation of pyruvate was in cytosol because glycolysis occurs in cytosol but this enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is present in mitochondria inner mitochondrial membrane so basically conversion of pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A occurs in mitochondria so, definitely acetyl coenzyme A must enter mitochondria. How it enters mitochondrial matrix with pyruvate hydrogen symport. This is a uh, transporter which actually carries acetyl coenzyme A inside mitochondrial matrix. Now, uh, in mitochondrial matrix, the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is present in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now, this is this enzyme complex is a very interesting is a very complex enzyme complex where there are three different enzyme activity basically there are three different enzymes present. One is pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme 1 then enzyme 2 is dihydrolipoyl transacetylase and then dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase. So, there are three different enzymes present in this enzyme complex not only that there are five coenzymes or prosthetic groups. What are those? Thiamine pyrophosphate, flavin adenine dinucleotide, coenzyme A. 
nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide as well as lipoid these are the five different prosthetic groups or coenzyme now nutritionally this enzyme complex is also important because there are four vitamins which are required now what are those vitamins thiamine which is present in thiamine pyrophosphate riboflavin present in fad flavin adenine dinucleotide niacin present in nad and pantothenate present in coenzyme a so you can see in this enzyme complex there are three different enzymes present five prosthetic groups of or coenzyme present as well as four vitamins required for this enzyme's activity so uh, how this conversion of pyruvate is happening with the help of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex so we can see there are sequential enzyme reaction by which pyruvate is converted to acetyl coenzyme a this is the whole sequence of the reactions which is occurring inside the enzyme complex now in the first step you can see pyruvate is converted to pyruvate is actually releasing carbon dioxide so there is decarboxylation as well as the acetyl group is attached to ppp molecule now this ppp after taking off the uh, hydrox uh, after taking up the acetyl group it is converted to hydroxy ethyl ppp then in the second reaction with the help of pyruvate dehydrogenase this acetyl group is transferred to the core enzyme what is the core enzyme dihydrolipoyl transacetylase this is the core enzyme and in this core enzyme there are two sulfhydryl group this acetyl group is taken up by the oxidized lipoyl lysine group of core enzyme so this is the oxidized lipoyl lysine group of core enzyme and it after taking the acetyl group from ppp it forms the acyl lipoyl lysine this is the acyl lipoyl lysine okay now in the third reaction there is coenzyme a which is actually taking up this acetyl group from the core enzyme and it forms ultimately the acetyl coenzyme a which regenerates reduced lipoyl lysine so this is the reduced lipoyl lysine you can see the sulfhydryl groups are here reduced so all these are occurring inside the core enzyme that is dihydrolipoyl transacetylase now this reduced lipoyl lysine actually it gives off these hydrogen atoms to fad fad present in the third enzyme that is dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase FAD is reduced to form FADH2 and in the core enzyme once again the oxidized lipoyl lysine is formed once again you can see that from here the oxidized form is there now this reduced FADH2 they, it gives up the hydride to generate NADH from NAD so once again the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex with its prosthetic groups with the help of the vitamins they are ready for the next cycle of conversion of acetyl coenzyme a from pyruvate so at the end of the reaction what we are getting that pyruvate releases carbon dioxide decarboxylation as well as it produces acetyl coenzyme a and also produces NADH are reducing equivalent so now this acetyl coenzyme a enters the tca cycle proper now what happens in tca cycle now tca cycle is tricarboxylic acid cycle also known as citric acid cycle also known as krebs cycle because definitely with the name of the discoverer hans krebs it is 
named Krebs cycle. So, definitely it is a cyclical reaction or cyclical metabolic pathway where there are series of cyclical reaction inside mitochondria which oxidizes the acetyl residue of acetyl coenzyme A and the reduced coenzyme form is form reduced coenzyme they undergo reoxidation in electron transport chain which forms ATP. So, this is the crux of TCA cycle. Now, TCA cycle is also the final common pathway for aerobic oxidation of carbohydrate lipid as well as protein because as we have already discussed acetyl coenzyme A comes from comes not only from glucose through pyruvate but also from fatty acid by fatty acid oxidation and also from different uh, different uh, amino acids. Then TCA cycle plays a central role in neoglucogenesis, lipogenesis and also interconversion of amino acids. We will discuss definitely in the later sessions. And with respect to TCA cycle, liver is the most important organism because this is the only tissue where all these metabolic pathways are happening. So, this is the li this is liver, liver is the only tissue where all of these metabolic pathways are happening in a significant extent. Now, this is the TCA cycle, let us see what is happening. So, you can see here acetyl coenzyme A which is formed from pyruvate is entering TCA cycle. It, com it is combined with oxaloacetate a 4 carbon molecule to generate citrate. The name is citric acid cycle because now citric, citric acid will undergo cyclical conversion to different molecules. So, uh, there is formation of citrate with the help of the enzyme citrate synthase with the help of the enzyme citrate synthase. Now, citrate synthase why it is important it is basically uh, helping to form direct bond between carbon carbon the acetyl group of acetyl coenzyme A and the carbonyl group of carbonyl group of oxaloacetate to form citrate. Now, citrate undergoes isomerization to form isocitrate. Now, this isomerization process is a two step reaction and the enzyme is econitase. In the two step reaction the enzyme is econitase. First citrate is now, citrate undergoes dehydration to form cis econitate. Cis econitate once again undergo rehydration to form isocitrate. So, this is the isomer of citrate. Now, this enzyme econitase is inhibited by fluoroacetate is inhibited by fluoroacetate. Now, what happens fluoroacetate it forms fluoroacetyl coenzyme A in the form of fluoroacetyl coenzyme A it enters the TCA cycle combines with oxaloacetate to form fluorocitrate. Now, this fluorocitrate inhibits econitase. So, basically fluoroacetate undergoes modification to fluorocitrate which inhibits Econitase. Next, isocitrate undergoes oxidative decarboxylation to form alpha ketoglutarate. Again, this is a two step reaction. So, in this process, the first product is oxalosuccinate. Isocy from isocitrate, oxalosuccinate is formed by dehydrogenation with the help of the enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase. As there is dehydrogenation, there is formation of NADH from NAD. Then there is decarboxylation, 
again the enzyme is isocytate dehydrogenase decarboxylation. So, there is release of carbon dioxide finally, forming a 5 carbon compound alpha ketoglutarate. Next, this alpha ketoglutarate once again undergo oxidative decarboxylation another step of oxidative decarboxylation with the help of the enzyme alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. Now, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is a complex which is similar to pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. The whole enzyme reaction is just similar with pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. So, basically there are 3 different enzymes, there are 5 different prosthetic groups as well as 4 vitamins which are required for the enzyme activity. So, because that is decarboxylation reaction, there is release of carbon dioxide and also formation of NADH. Now, succinyl coenzyme A is converted to succinate. Now, this is one substrate level phosphorylation. What happens? In succinyl coenzyme A, there is a high energy thioester bond, which finally helps in formation of ATP with the help of the enzyme succinate thiokinase. Remember, in all the kinases, there is magnesium ion required as cofactor. So, there is formation of succinate, which is a 4 carbon compound. Now, succinate undergoes different conversion to finally form oxaloacetate. What are those intermediates? From succinate, there is formation of fumarate with the help of the enzyme succinate dehydrogenase. Now, succinate dehydrogenase is uh, the enzyme which can be competitively inhibited by malonate. And in this dehydrogenation, there is formation of FADH2 instead of NADH. Here, in this dehydrogenation reaction, there is formation of FADH2. Now, fumarate is converted to malate with addition of one molecule of water. Uh, you can see that here water is coming out basically this is a reversible reaction and from malate to fumarate there is from release of water, but for formation of malate from fumarate there is addition of water and the enzyme here is fumarase. Now, once again malate forms oxaloacetate by another dehydrogenation reaction with the help of malate dehydrogenase and there is uh, formation of NADH. So, as we have discussed that at the end of TCA cycle, we are getting reducing equivalence and uh, those reducing equivalence are generating ATPs. So, let us see what are the net ATP production at the end of TCA cycle. So, in TCA cycle, there are reducing equivalence like NADH in these steps, we are getting 3 NADH molecule. So, these are the 3 NADH molecule from where we are getting energy which is equivalent to from each NADH molecule we are getting energy equivalent to 2.5 molecules of ATP. Fine. So, seven point five molecules of ATP. Then there is another reducing equivalent FADH two. One molecules of FADH two. Now FADH two on oxidation it gives rise to energy which is equivalent to one point. 5 molecules of ATP. Remember previously the concept was 2 molecules of ATP are generated from FADH2, but the recent concept is that there is 1.5 molecules of ATP generated from FADH2. So, 1.5 ATP from FADH2 
then there is substrate level phosphorylation. So, in substrate level phosphorylation we are getting 1 ATP substrate level phosphorylation we are getting 1 ATP. So, at the end of T 1 TCA cycle we are getting 10 molecules of ATP. Now, remember that after glycolysis from one molecule of glucose, we were getting two pyruvates, which was which is actually generating two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A. So, basically two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A undergo two cycles of TCA cycle. So, there is 20 ATP formation plus if you do remember once again from pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A there were formation of one molecule of NADH. So, from two molecules of uh, two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A formation we are getting two molecules of NADH actually. So, these two molecules of NADH are giving rise to 5 molecules of ATP So, at the end of glycolysis we were getting 7 molecules of ATP glycolysis we were getting 7 molecules of ATP and at the end of TCA cycle we were getting 25 molecules of ATP. So, the calculation which we can see that at the end of one molecule of glucose oxidized through aerobic glycolysis following TCA cycle to up to the end of electron transport chain you can see there is 25 plus 7 that is 32 molecules of ATPs are generated. So, these are the key points discussed today that is TCA cycle is occurring inside mitochondria, pyruvate is converted to acetyl coenzyme A that is also inside mitochondria with the help of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. The resultant acetyl coenzyme A enters TCA cycle. In TCA cycle NADH, FADH2 and subs by following substrate level phosphorylation ATP are formed and these electron carriers they finally enters electron transport chain and undergoes oxidative phosphorylation to form ATPs. So, this is the energy production through glycolysis and TCA cycle. Thank you.